Cruel stem stitch in a single thread. You could use double thread for this stitch, but make slightly longer stitches, about half an inch in length. So I've cast on in a next door feature so that my tail of my uh, waist knot isn't in the way of my stitching because there's nothing more irritating. So come up at the beginning of your line and go down and this can be anything up to about half an inch with double thread but with single thread that's going to be slightly shorter. So I go down to the proportion of the size of the thread as well as the curve of the feature. So as I go down with my needle I'm using my second finger in my needle hand and keeping that on top of the frame. Then I bring my needle up from below and pinch with my thumb and my first finger. So bring that up and you'll find that your first stitch goes flat. Go down for the next stitch in the same length as the first stitch. Again, hold your wool to the side and come back up in the first stitch. As you go around a shorter corner, then you might want to make your stitches slightly smaller. Now, as you can see, I'm stitching up and down using the same action, rather like a piston, as I do for the long and short stitch. So you don't want to stitch like that all day. So I've developed a technique where I actually turn my hand and tension the wool that way. And I find that works really well, particularly in this stitch. So I go down, I use my second finger as usual, then I come up, I pinch the needle with my thumb and my first finger as usual, but now I'm going to split my hand like that and turn it so that it's actually turning the hand that makes the tension of the stitch. So go down, use your second finger to hold the loop away, come back at the end of the previous stitch, pinch, split, turn and you'll find that you can rock it through your stitching if you use these very comfortable techniques. So down, back up at the end of the last stitch, pinch, split, turn. And I'm going to race down this side doing this technique.